So we're gonna be talking about Yoko Tomonagi and how I did this as an athlete. Now, mine's a little bit different than your traditional one. So if you do not have a base with this throw, I do not suggest starting out with this because it's a little bit more complex and it does take a base level of understanding on how to do the throw. But we're gonna go over my version that I had a lot of success with internationally. And now I primarily did this right on left. And now here's why, because if I didn't set the groundwork for this technique, it would never work. So what would happen is left on right, a lefty's always coming out and they're trying to get this post. And now I'm fighting through this hand and he has every opportunity to throw me because he has his power hand on the gi and I'm kind of left with nothing. And I don't want to just play from the outside. I really got to break down this arm and come down his back and hold him close so that I can get my hips involved and get my legs across in order to score. Now, I didn't always want to be in that kind of danger in matches. So while I'm in this position, I'd always try to take this hand off the gi or catch it before it gets onto my gi. And then I can pin it down to my partner's body. And now I can start putting my left hand on the gi. And now I can start yanking my opponent down the mat. I have this lead leg. I have my big Koshi Garumas, my big Iponse and Agis. And what would happen a lot of times is my partners would go, well, I don't want Travis to throw me with those big throws. It's dangerous, right? It's hard to stop when they don't have that hand on the gi. So what would happen is I would pin this hand down and they would roll that hand over and they would steal my sleeve. So now when I have that post and he has my sleeve, now I can't come across, I can't do Koshi Gruma, and we're kind of in like a stalemate where who's gonna let go of the gi first? Because most lefties do not develop judo from this position, right? Because our hands are down on this side, the only real opportunity for them to score is an ochi on this leg from the double sleeve position or a sode in the opposite direction, which 99.9% .9 of lefties just don't do, especially when we're this close together and we're stuck in tight, right? So what I would do is, since I knew I was getting stuck here, I decided to develop a throw off of this position that could punish lefties for putting me in, in this stalled position. And that was my Yoko Tomonagi. Because I'm primarily a right-handed player, my Yoko Tomonagi actually required me to change my stance to left and then throw the throw. But I can break all the normal traditional rules of gripping and positioning and all that because the second I make that stance change, I'm trying to throw my partner, okay? So while we're in this position and I'm stuck, I would start playing with my partner's lead leg. I would start sweeping it, kicking it, getting it to move. That way, the second I come in and I kick him once, now when I come back and I go to kick him again, he'll move it out of the way. And that's when I can take this hand, when he goes to take that step back, go ahead, there. I can pull this down into the floor and you can see that circle here starting to create. So while he has this post right here and I press down, he's firmly solid on his feet, right? His center of gravity is still over the top of him. But the second I kick him once and I go to kick him again and he moves it, there, I can create that circle. And that's my opportunity and that's how I set this up. So when I'm here, I sweep one, I go to sweep again and I step, now I'm in my left-handed stance. I pull down, head goes close to the foot. I let my leg collapse and then I can extend up and I can finish the technique, right? It's super simple to do once you understand the core concept of Yoko Tomonagi and what you're trying to accomplish. But again, while I'm here, we sweep one, come back, boom. And then we finish the technique. Let's take a look at it from the other angle. We're here. I steal his sleeve, he comes back and takes mine. I'm in my right-handed stance, I step, sweep, step, he moves. Finish the technique. Now granted, there are a lot of different angles that you're gonna wanna do while you're going live. And there's a few different like high-end finishes that I would use against particular players, given the circumstances. So let's take a look at one of those just different kinds of finishes that you can do if you're in a competitive scenario. So. He's gonna be on this side. Now we use this when our partner catches us and they just don't wanna get thrown. So this isn't for the guy that's gonna be acrobatic and cartwheel out or jump over the top or anything like that. This is the guy that's gonna catch you, hold you, and then make sure you can't get the power to push. So when we're in this position, we go one, 
And then we come in, bang, and he's, and you just can't get that, right? But because I'm pulling him down and he's pulling me up, it makes my upper body really light. And what I can do is I can sneak this knee here, look over quick. I can take this knee and I can dip it behind my partner's leg. I can take my elbow and I can make a connection between this knee and this elbow. And now he can't take this foot out. So what I do from that position, this is still on his belt, I extend this leg. Damn, and I have his ankle trapped, perfectly IJF legal, because I'm holding the sleeve. I'm holding the jacket above the belt line, which means I can use my elbows to trap the leg. So again, from this angle here, we're here, he's gonna catch me. Boom, I can't get it. I dip that knee and I catch it, and now I extend this leg. Boom, and there's my Lazari for the finish in today's rule set. So that's one of the different finishes off that position that I've developed over the years because certain players were putting me in that no-win situation of rolling their hand off one of my dominant grips. Give it a shot, let me know what you think.